All right. Uh, sometime, sometime today, a particular school called me, and they saw the video, the previous video about you know how to use these Hager digital timers, and she had a problem where well, she had a school. Oh, well, it was a school, sorry, that the bell had to come off at different times. And if you flick over here, you can see the times. And it had to go off at 8.40 for five or six seconds or 10 seconds. And, you know, so it was intermittent. All right. Now, it was, she was in a bit of a pickle. She didn't know what to do. She called me. We couldn't get it all up and running. I couldn't even figure it out there on the spot because the timer was in an awkward spot. I couldn't get in to figure out what was going on. It had been so long ago since I did the previous video. It must be about two or three years ago. Anyhow, I thought this would be a good update on how to set it for times like this because it's not set. It's irregular times for irregular days at, at, at different intervals. Anyhow, it was the... The Hager EG203E, and it is a good digital timer. Okay. Lucky enough, the guys gave me the box. They gave me the. This is actually a demo model that they gave me just to work it out. But anyhow, here we go. So we'll just start from scratch again. I'm going to show you. So to start from scratch, I'm going to delete all the previous times on this. And by doing that, is see all these three buttons here. I'm just going to put the pencil across there. Now, you would have seen that. Okay. There you go. Now, just for talk's sake, when you put power onto this digital timer for the first time, it activates something inside and, and the clock starts going. And you can see the previous time was here. What is it? It's saying here, the actually the date's right, the 7th of the 2nd, 2015, and the time is actually right, so it, it held its time, even though you deleted across there. But we'll start from scratch here, okay? First of all, you go to menu, right? Now it says program, then it has what, you, you know, you'd think it was a Star Trek symbol, but it's actually a, a, where you can view your times after you program it. The clock there, the clock there is actually for the clock, and that's for holiday periods, okay? Um, I previously went into the video the last time showing you that if you're in different countries, such as Europe or Asia or North America or Australia or whatever, when you go to set this up initially with the time, it'll give you what daylight savings you want to enter into. And obviously every country has different daylight savings, so you're better off going to the last, um, the last, uh, it says Europe, then it goes America, then it goes Australia, something like that. And then it goes to user. Press on user, and it's pretty apparent what you have to do, and it's easy to set. But we're not here to teach you that. Anyhow, here we go. So, when it's on the press menu again, just watch yourself there for a bit. Yeah. Right? Press over to, oh no, sorry, we want to go back to the program. When you get it on program, press OK. Two channels, A and B, basically two switches. We'll pick A, right, and away we go. Now one, I'm going to just remind you, if we pop over here, one is Monday, two is Tuesday, three is Wednesday, four is Thursday, five is Friday, six will be Saturday, seven will be Sunday. So we're only interested in the school that's open five days a week. So we'll come back here. This late, this particular school wanted it open. I wanted this time schedule for Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and this for Tuesday. So we'll just, for short purposes, we'll just do these five. So getting back to the timer here. All right. Don't go too close. I got to see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, we're on Monday. Okay. So we press. Okay. Now we don't want Tuesday, so we skip over that. See? And then we want Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now with this we want to skip over because that's Saturday, Sunday. And then press OK. Right, now if you see these flashing signs at the side here, on, off, and this top little sort of, I don't know what would you call it, some sort of like a square, like a pie sign, you want that, that's the pulse sign. So we'll Go up to that one, 
and away we go. So once you're on that one, we're going to press OK. Now the first step, we're going to go to, like here on the first time here, which is 840. We're going to go to 840. OK. A40, and then press OK. Right? Now, this flashing is the seconds of how much the pulse is going to stay on. You can actually do minutes and seconds. We're only going to do, let's say, 10 seconds. So we'll go up 10 seconds. Hopefully, you can see that on the video. Press OK. It'll go to minutes, which we're not interested. All right? Press OK. And now we're on to the next time. The next time, which will be 9 o'clock. Right? So we'll go up to 9. Press OK. Come back to there. OK. Come on. OK. And once again, you see the flashing? It's actually, it saves the time, but you can put it down to five seconds if you want, or three, whatever you want. I'm going to press OK. No minutes. OK. And so on and so on and so on. OK? We're well, just going to discontinue the video right here now, and I'm going to go straight to the very end to cut all these times that I'm going to have to save in here, and I'll come back. OK? OK? Stop. OK. I went through all the times that you would have seen on the piece of paper, and we're at 3 o'clock here. All right. We're at 3. Press it like that. Press it like that. Here's the 10 seconds again, and obviously there was a series of times before that. And press OK. OK. Okay, now, right here, see it's flicking there, we're going to change that to the off. See the way I flicked it to the off? I used these two plus and minuses to get to the off. I'm going to press OK, but this, and I'm going to press 15 OK. I'm just going to put it to one minute, which is one minute past the three. Now, error might come up here. It may come up, or it may not, but anyhow, it worked for me, this one. Press this, OK. And that was it. Now, I think it's as simple as that. Now, when I say I think, that's what I did, and it worked, right? Um, so, just for talk's sake, we'll go back to the menu. Just want to double check this. Off. Off. Yeah, see the error came up there? Don't worry about that. Because when I go back, to the menu, right, and I'll go into menu. Now this time instead of program, I'm going to go to what I did on my program. All right? Press OK. And we're going to go to A. And if you ever if you it, it did it did work out because I don't know if you see these small little tiny nicks down here. I don't know if the camera can pick them up. But anyhow, when you see it yourself when you do 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 this you'll see that these little nicks represent the 10 seconds for each time lag that you set it for. So it's telling me that the clock, the digital timer is ready to go. It's working. Okay? So that's the way you do it. Now, I don't know if you can see this. This little key here, it stores the memory of your whatever times you want. Right? It's very easily, easily worked too. Just plug it in there, and now you'll see in a minute It'll activate it. Watch, I'm just going to push it down. See this way it's activated? So it's in. And it's starting to try and sync with the actual timer. Once it syncs with the timer, and I think it's synced, you just press menu. And now you've got a choice. Either save what's on this, right? What's, oh, sorry. The save is save whatever program you programmed within the digital timer, right? And we'll just go back to that. If you press menu, it'll give you the option again. Save of whatever you went into the timer, or you can load. I just pressed that button. You can load what was ever in the key onto the timer, and away you go, right? And you press OK, and it'll load it up. I press load, but there was nothing on this actual, there was nothing on this key. Pretty simple, okay? So I'm going to take out the key, and Bob's your uncle. All right, that concludes.
Thanks very much. See you then.